All right, guys. So a quick MGTOW one. I'm going to be quite quick on this. It's poking the bear too much. I've got to say that I think a lot of the MGTOW stuff is actually spinning out of basically too much political correctness, too much um, silliness. And I say silliness because a lot of the stuff people have already got and will often use it in a very skewed way. For example, when people talk about rights, it is often not rights, it's actually privilege they mean. And it was quite funny relating to a meme somebody sent me and I just reposted it. And, but all it had was at the top it had um, nobody should have to work 40 hours a week. Um, and be poor and then the bottom had another image and it said uh, Well stop giving their money uh, to other people and I reposted it because I found it funny Somebody then commented with a big F you and you must be one of these rich bricks and all this sort of stuff abusive the answer to this coming from the United Kingdom that I earn above the tax threshold which puts me at 40% tax I lose money because I pay too much tax and I'm giving it away to the poor and the whoever. Um, but it's very easy to say you must be rich because if there's only rich and poor, there is no reality that most of it actually comes out the middle. Um, but the point being is, for a, from an analytical point of view, I did somebody's uh, salary before, I sorted out their wages and I looked at theirs and I looked at mine, there was £12,000 difference between the pay. But when you actually really look at it, it's like that. Because I pay 40% tax, he doesn't pay that amount of tax. He's entitled to child benefit. He's entitled to other things that basically means that he's actually better off than I am and actually earns 12,000 pound less. And this is one of the arguments I had with the business I was with because I said, look, give me less money and put me through a university degree instead. I would rather not earn the money because I don't receive it anyway. Um, put it, it through something that's a tax write off for the business. I'm sick and tired of giving money away. But anyway, that's a prime example. The guy got very aggressive and then instantly I must be rich because I didn't agree with his opinion. That is often where you're going with MGTOW. Put up and shut up in the divorce courts. You are responsible for these children, you're responsible for your ex-wife. At no point does it come in, she's, she's at working age, she should be working. It's the, she can do with that, you're responsible for your kids, but at the end of the day, hey ho, she shouldn't automatically get the house, get the kids and everything else, because we believe in equality. Equality is down the middle, 50-50. Um, not, well, she's got the kids in house because she gets the kids because she's the mother, because mothers look after kids far better than fathers for some bizarre belief system. Um, I don't actually think it's correct anyway, but anyway. There's plenty of methadone women out there that can actually confirm that is true, but anyway, the point being is that they put them automatically with the mother, then it's followed on with the fact of reinforcing it by more money from the guy. And obviously they come out with 50%, but they may not put 50% in. Man up and just pay it up. That is often the way it's pushed. My personal view is the same as you would any business person. You bury your money, you hide your money, you find ways to get your money invisible. You're coming up to divorce, may even pay to quit work and have a look at how you can go to um, a court system unemployed um, because it may work to your benefit. And I'm not advising people how to deal with their divorces, but simply saying, well, she's expecting to sit at home, I can do the same. I'll go down to the job centre, tell them I'm homeless and everything else, and I'll go unemployed until they give me a home. The same way she thinks that I'll just keep paying for hers. What's wrong with that? That's the same system, surely. Surely that's being fair. Um, but that was an example. You know, it's the guy who kicked back with like, oh, I must be one of rich because it just separates this. And then the whole point I'm saying about this whole divorce thing is because obviously we must be sad, lonely guys to be talking about MGTOW when in fact it's actually protecting your assets, protecting your finance. Um, organizing a better future and pushing your life in the right direction. At the same time, this is why I would say my channel is probably heading more in a traditional sense. Um, I have a traditional marriage, which are becoming a very rare thing in the West. Um, the point being is we actually believe 
in the, the marriage and the marriage for life and all this sort of stuff because that was our level of commitment which sort of makes it very skewed for the MGTOW stuff but keeps us on tangent relating to this topic that a lot of this stuff is the bear is being poked too much the man does contest um, what you're having is like I was talking to Justin earlier, Justin was saying about the some of the incidents in London and the UK which is why he said he wouldn't want to live in the UK with his kids because his, his kids are like half British and half from somewhere else and the point being is I understand that completely and a lot of this is people that were normally middle of the road are constantly being poked because it's a bit like gay rights. I'm, I'm not being funny. I, I, I have no prejudice against gay people and I have no bother about what people do behind closed doors and stuff. But I don't need it in every TV episode. I don't need to be constantly told if somebody's sexual orientation and they want to be called Zed this week or want to be a man tomorrow and a woman next Tuesday. I really don't care. I just don't need to know. And I think that's it. You know, a lot of people are simply sick and tired of it. When it gets funny is when you have things like um, the bus incident in the UK. On, on UK buses, they have a space that is reserved for wheelchair users. But it can also be used for um, strollers, you know, child pushchairs. And the PC Brigade got really confused on this because how do you turn around and say who's more important, somebody in a wheelchair or a child sleeping in a buggy? Cannot compute because the people they like to attack are guys and single people. Um, that's why you have family spaces and you have disabled car parking spaces and here we have, in Spain we have pregnancy spaces and there's some other ones that I come across from time to time and you're just thinking do we really need all these, <laughs> these parking spaces? By the time they're finished I'm in the next car park. Um, but the whole point is all these people have had their minorities become majorities and they've become focused on taking their agenda as the benefit of all when in fact it is for themselves. In fact it often causes displacement of the majority be to accommodate changes which give these people a priority. Um, don't get me wrong, I have no problem with people having um, disabilities or whatever ha having a car parking space. I have a problem when it takes up two floors of a car park without a drive through and only three out of the two, uh, three car spaces are taken out two floors and the rest of the normal spaces are full which means you end up on the roof in the rain because these spaces have too many. That's what I have an issue with. Um, but in the same way I would have to say that when you try and say there's too many spaces, come on guys, you don't need that many, you're instantly kicked back. Things go one way, not the other. Social systems work that way. In the UK, the standard of living for people on benefits, etc., has increased horrendously. Um, it's pretty much on par with somebody who works full time or a couple that works full time. Um, and yet, they think that it's fair because they're not paying for it. But when you turn around and say, like I'm saying, you know, I'm paying £12,000 a year extra for nothing, nothing in return. Um, they would simply say, yeah, but you, you have more. I don't have less. I've just explained it. Because the guy that earned £12,000 less than me gets child benefit, he gets some um, other benefits in the UK. And a lot of this stuff they do not actually need anyway. It is the way the system has become unbalanced to bring people up to the same standard of living, which has actually pulled my standard of living down to accommodate it. And that is socialism. But at the same time, what you're having now is because you bring everything up to that same standard, they're sitting there scratching their head at the moment because of things like child places. Because 
In the UK, they have these free child places for um, nurseries, but on average, it costs around £200 a week for a nursery place in the UK per child. Think about that. £200 a week for a child to be in nursery care. How much does a parent need to earn to actually afford to have a income worth going to and that child in care? I'll leave that to you. Because what's happened is, over the years, they made it into an enterprise, a business. The average pay for a nursery nurse is between 19,000 and 34,000. Um, according to the information I've got today. That doesn't include people, it probably doesn't include people going through training and it probably doesn't include the fact that those figures may actually be slightly off if they do because somebody through training may get a lower salary where there may be people earning far more than 34,000. So 19 to 34,000 is the figures I come across. The reason I bring this up is I don't really see why people are earning that higher salary for a bloody nursery. Um, because, quite simply, the children are that young, what do they need to be earning 34k a year? Answers on the postcard. Because what you're looking at is somebody that should actually be on about 12k a year. And I know I'm going to get backlash of it, but the whole point is, a lot of people forget, you keep bringing things up and up and up, what actually happens is you devalue everything. And like that, the cost of childcare has got to the point where they're scratching their head saying, well, these free childcare places don't pay enough for the nursery. Um, and the nurseries aren't really, they're struggling to make a profit. In reality, the incomes relating to how much nurseries are paying their staff is too high, but nobody actually wants to talk about the elephant in the room, for a service that should be far more simple. And, this is the way things are going because nobody actually wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about the 1.5 million people employed in the NHS in various ways. Nobody wants to talk about the pay structure related to nurses and how they get these different uh, pays and then how the average pays and that are taken, plus the extra subsidies, the, the living allowances and everything else. Nobody wants to go into that. They want to take it from the bottom level saying people only get this. Um, there's only rich and poor. Reality is, they take it out the middle, and this is why I think the elephant in the room is that people are taking far too much from the middle. Um, whether the rich or not um, pay their taxes, I don't think would make that much difference. I really don't, because it's a bit like in the UK. If they pay more taxes, you listen to these people on question time or whatever, they're only going to waste it and splurge that money on things like the NHS. 1.5 million people working in NHS. 1.5 million people. That's horrendous. Um, so the point being is, they take out the middle. And it's the middle that get penalised for it. Um, and I say that's where a lot of the MGTOW is. We are the middle. Uh, because at the end of the day, a lot of us do work, a lot of us are self-sufficient, a lot of us are working class, and a lot of us are paying way too much tax, more than we should be paying. But I do not think that giving more to poor people will actually encourage them to do more. I don't think that the solutions are all there for everybody. A lot of people have very little to offer the working environment these days um, because of the way the education system has failed. But Ultimately, if you wanted to change your life, you can do. I mean, you've got access to things like YouTube. You've got access to college courses online that you can literally replicate and learn as much. You may not get that little bit of paper, but at the end of the day, a lot of companies really couldn't care about the bit of paper. If you can prove you can do it and everything else, the opportunities are there. You may, you may not get the same salary without a bit of paper. It's the same reason I went back and did, did my city and gills in carpentry and joinery. Um, because it was an extra 36 pence an hour by having that little bit of paper. But the point is, it doesn't mean you can't do it. What we, we are finding today, though, is we seem to be subsidizing a lot of people that think they're entitled to take our money. 
think they're entitled to free housing, think they're entitled to basically live off everybody else and have the right to sit and complain and take, take, take. There is nothing incentivizing them to do better, do more and produce something of worth including their own self-worth. Sorry for the rant. Thanks for watching.